to our online worship at Chalmers Presbyterian Church in London. And uh, today I'm doing the recording from the, the front of the church sanctuary, and as part of our worship, we'll be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. Again, welcome. Our call to worship is taken from living faith and has to do with prayer. It's a responsive call to worship. Life in Christ involves prayer, the seeking of God's will and blessing on all of life. Prayer is openness to the presence of God. In words, or the absence of words, prayer is the focusing of our lives toward God. As we commune with God through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit enables us to express our deepest longings, and we experience the sustaining power of God's presence. Let us worship God, and let's sing our opening praise selection we praise you, O oh God.
We praise you, God, for your forgiveness and saving grace are for everyone. May we be blessed by the gift of your forgiveness. May we share these blessings with others and live as your forgiven, forgiving people. And now as we turn to hear your word, God of wisdom, calm our spirits and still our minds so that we are able to receive the fullness of your message and respond with faithfulness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. This is Hannah's prayer, but I'm going to read just two or three verses at the end of chapter 1. Hannah said, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him. Therefore I have lent him to the Lord as long as he lives. He is given to the Lord. She left him there for the Lord. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord. No one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The barren have borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. Our responsive reading is from Psalm 86, verses 1 to 10. Let us hear God's word as we read responsibly. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble I will call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Thanks be to God. And finally, the reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22, the reference to the Lord's Supper. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This 
is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hannah's prayer is your prayer. Hannah's prayer is my prayer. This prayer of praise and adoration to God has been called one of the ten best prayers of the Bible. It includes these words, My heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. This is Hannah's prayer, part two, if you will. Hannah prayed these words as she left her only son, Samuel, to serve the Lord at the temple of God. But this prayer needs to be heard in light of Hannah's backstory. Remember, Hannah had been unable to have any children had been misunderstood by her husband, Elkanah, and ridiculed and derided by his other wife, Penea, who had many children. She was deeply troubled, the Bible says, and she acknowledged this herself before Eli the priest. She prayed, and she prayed, and she prayed. Hannah prayed silently. As she prayed, she wept bitterly, for she was deeply distressed. Eli observed her praying, and he thought she was drunk. Hannah endured many trials and tribulations. She experienced ongoing verbal abuse, and while her husband loved her, he didn't understand that she was hurting so bad. Hannah, he asked, why are you crying? Why aren't you eating? Why are you so sad? Hannah seemed so very alone in her suffering and distress. Now, I'm pretty sure that you can identify with Hannah and her struggles, even if your situation was or isn't exactly what Hannah was facing. There are times when we feel discouraged and troubled as we face real challenges and defeats in life. We feel lost, even alone, and wonder if anyone cares, even if God knows or cares. Hannah's challenges and her prayer are most relevant during this global pandemic, particularly as it drags on with no end insight. I came across the story of an elderly widow, restricted in her activities, but who was still eager to serve God. After praying about this, she realized she could bring blessings to others by playing the piano. The next day she placed an ad in the paper that read, Pianists will play hymns by phone daily for those who are sick and despondent. The service is free. The notice included her phone number, and when people called, she would ask, What hymn would you like to hear? Within a few months, her playing had brought encouragement and joy to several hundred people. Many of them poured out their hearts to her, and she was able to help and encourage them as well. All this because she prayed. Hannah provides us with a, a wonderful example of a living faith and a vital prayer life. She didn't turn away from God in anger, but she turned toward God in prayer. The Bible says she poured out her soul before the Lord. O oh Lord of hosts, she prayed, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant. 
Year by year, the barrenness and verbal abuse continued. This was no short-term crisis, but an enduring reality. Yet Hannah continued to trust God and pray for God's blessing in the form of a child to be given to her. Hannah prayed to God, the living God, the God of steadfast love and power, the God who years before said these wondrous words to Moses, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians. Finally, Eli understood Hannah's situation and her prayer, and he spoke to her, saying, Go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And even before her prayer was answered, the Bible says, Hannah was sad no longer. Not only did Eli understand what she was going through, but God heard her prayers. There are times when we wonder if there's anyone out there to hear our prayers. Are we just talking to the air, whispering to the wind, calling out to the darkness? But Hannah's practice of prayer tells us another story, a better story. Hannah's, Hannah prayed to the living God, the God who hears and answers prayer. She prayed persistently, with perseverance and passion. She prayed with tears and with great anxiety and vexation over an extended period of time. Hannah's prayer is real and realistic. There, there's faith and there's anguish at the same time all mixed together in her prayers. This is the stuff of life and faith. And God answered Hannah's prayer, and she named her son Samuel, which means God has heard. And Hannah fulfills her promise to give her son to the full-time service of the Lord. And Samuel became the last of the judges and a great prophet of God. While the Bible tells us God hears and answers our prayers. We know we don't always get the answer that we're looking for. God's response may be yes or no or not yet. Nevertheless, our prayers are never in vain, for they are part of our ongoing relationship with the living God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Preacher and author Tom Long puts it this way, all prayers, whether they are prayers pleading for a season of world peace or prayers begging for a moment of inner peace, are really prayers yearning for God to embrace us. We pray for food and health and justice and forgiveness and protection, and truly these are our needs. But beneath it all, we're really praying for God to be with us, for God to hold us close, for God never to forget us or to abandon us to ourselves. Therefore, he concludes, however much we may speak of our prayers being answered, the truth is that prayers are the answer since in our praying, we are given what we most deeply need, communion, with God. As Hannah gives her only son Samuel to the service of God, she prays again a, a great prayer of adoration and praise to God. She praises God who makes poor and makes rich. God brings low and also exalts. The Lord's adversary shall be destroyed. God will guard the feet of his faithful ones. There is so much good news for us in Hannah's story, in Hannah's prayer. 
Her prayer clearly seems to have inspired Mary, the mother of Jesus, who prayed the Magnificat. Hannah's prayer also points forward to Christ who poured out his soul in prayer at Gethsemane and who poured out his life on the cross and rose again to defeat all the powers that might seek to harm or destroy us. May we pray as Hannah prayed. May we learn from Hannah and her prayer. May we persevere in prayer on our journey of faith, just as Christ has taught us. All praise and thanks be to God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. I thank Bob Finley in advance for the special praise that he has prepared for our online worship this morning. Bob will be singing This I Believe, the Creed.
our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Yes, I believe in the name announcements. Again, welcome to our online worship. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm recording the worship from the church sanctuary this week, and we will be celebrating um, the Lord's Supper. I want to thank our daughter Jackie Vanderman. Jackie is uh, assisting with the recording uh, that we're doing uh, here in the church sanctuary, and because it's only Jackie and me in the sanctuary, we're, we're not wearing the face masks, um, but I do have to say it's, it's good to be um, here in the sanctuary um, leading and uh, praying and, and sharing with you in worship. Uh, a sad note for our congregation, we heard just earlier in the week of the passing of Benny Townley, a longtime member, a longtime professing member of our congregation. In fact, um, one, of the, uh, one of the members of the congregation uh, who also was part of Chalmers Church when the church building was at Waterloo and Gray. And uh, Betty and her husband Bill moved to the Edmonton area a few years or several years ago now. Uh, Bill passed away a few years ago. And uh, we heard from their son Bob of Betty's death uh, just on Wednesday of this past week. So our, our sympathies to uh, Bob Townley and their family, to Betty's friends who mourn her passing, and yet we, we give thanks to God for Betty's faithfulness, her life, and her service, and her legacy. Thanks be to God for the life and faith of Betty Townley. Online worship continues through the month of August. Our task force, the session task force on, on um, what, it would be, what it would take to reopen the church building is meeting again this week and we'll be reporting to the online session meeting on uh, August 18th. So a bit later this month, We'll have some updates regarding plans for September and uh, the fall for Chalmers, uh, our worship and life together as God's people. In the meantime, I'm, uh, I'm going to be trying to visit as many of you as I can. Uh, a, a, a short visit at your front door or outside. This will be um, uh, coordinated with Wendy Sibley's help. She'll be calling you to see if... Uh, if you're available to, to meet me at the front door so we can chat and I can share a, a scripture, a prayer, or a blessing, and just to see each of you, but not a, an in-house visit, but an outdoor short visit. We're looking at the beginning this, this, this week and continuing uh, throughout the, the month of August. I'm calling it Chalmers on the Road, picking up on, the, on a, a, a Camp Kintail program called Kintail on the Road. So I do hope this will, will unfold and uh, I'll get to see many of you, if not all of you, as the month goes on. I invite you to uh, participate in our Thursday evening virtual uh, coffee hour uh, style uh, phone call. Uh, we, didn't have, uh, we didn't have our virtual coffee hour this past Thursday, but we're, we're renewing this again this, this Thursday evening at 7.30. And if you haven't heard about it, then please check with me or with Wendy, and we can make sure you get the um, access information. May uh, God continue to watch over us. May we continue to stay safe and, and do the right things to keep not only ourselves safe, but those who are, who are vulnerable, those who are um, perhaps at some risk, a greater risk even, for COVID-19. And uh, may God continue to, to bless us and to watch over us. 
We now continue to worship God as we present our gifts and our tithes. Hear these words of invitation to the offering. Thankful for the good gifts God gives us in Christ and in creation, may we present the fruit of our living, gifts and offerings for the work of God in the church and in the world. The offering will now be received. Let's pray. Let's bow in prayer. Let's pray the offering prayer. Faithful God, bless us as we give these gifts to you today. Use them and us to plant seeds of faith, hope, and love in the world so that your goodness will grow among your people and your name be honored for Christ's sake. Lord, hear our prayers as we approach your table by your gracious invitation. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the words of invitation to the Lord's Supper. Uh, this is a selection, a short uh, selection by Anne Weems. Eat, drink. Remember who I am. Eat, drink. Remember who I am, so you can remember who you are. Eat, drink. Remember who I am, so you can remember who you are and tell the others. Eat, drink. Remember who I am, so you can remember who you are and tell the others so that all God's people can live in communion, in holy communion. Let's profess our faith together in the words of the early and ancient creed of the church we call the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's come to God in prayer, the prayers of thanksgiving, the Eucharistic prayers, and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise your holy name, giving thanks to you with our lips and our lives. For the power and mystery of your word by which you created us and called us to yourself, we give you thanks. For the power and mystery of your word by which you took flesh and lived among us through your Son, Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for the power and mystery of your word by which you choose common people forming the church to be the body of Christ in the world. We give you thanks. Therefore, with all your faithful people from every time and place, we join with the whole creation to lift our hearts in joyful praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Faithful God, we offer you our praise and thanks as we return to you these holy gifts of bread and cup. Remembering our Lord's command to take and eat, we ponder the mystery of his promise that in this meal we are joined to him and to one another as a holy people 
uniting heaven and earth. We offer you our praise and thanks for Christ Jesus who took flesh and lived among us, was baptized for our sins, taught us your way of truth, loved us in our lovelessness, and died that we may have love. And now, O God, we celebrate with great joy the resurrection of our Lord, his presence with us in this feast, and his promise of a new creation, as we affirm the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of grace and power, you invite us to share in mysteries that are beyond our understanding. In simple trust, we seek the transforming power of your spirit. As we gather at your table on these words and actions, on this bread and this cup, in order that by the miracle of your grace, we may be united to Christ and to one another, one in body, one in spirit, one in faith. The sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we offer to you, gracious God, through Christ our Lord and Savior, who lives in unity with you and the Holy Spirit, one God to all eternity. Gracious God, we lift up to you in our prayers today with thanksgiving and with hope. And we pray for those who come before us in mind and heart. We lift up to you the family of Becky Townley. Ask that you bless her son Bob and their family and all of Betty's friends who grieve her passing and yet at the same time give you thanks for her long and faithful life. Gracious God, we pray for your healing hand upon Todd Webster, who is receiving care in hospital, we ask that you bless and be with his family, be with Brenda and Anne, and watch over him, bring him back to fullness of health, Lord, by your grace. Lord, hear our prayers for those who come to mind and heart, as we give you thanks and praise. And as we pray in the name of Christ Jesus, the great physician, who taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If, if you have bread and, and the cup um, nearby at home, I invite you to join with me in the celebration of the Lord's Supper. While eating the Passover meal with his disciples, Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread, which the earth has given and human hands have made. Blessed be God forever. And Jesus broke the bread and handed it to his disciples, and he said, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after the supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. Blessed be God forever. He handed the cup to his disciples and he said, Take and drink. This is my blood which is poured out for many. My blood which seals God's covenant. Drink of it all of you. For these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. The bread of heaven, 
the body of Christ given for you. The cup of salvation, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, you have fed us at this your table by your grace. We have experienced your presence. We thank you for this time of worship, this time of prayer, praise, and proclamation for the breaking of bread and for the nourishment we've experienced in Christ. We now ask God that, that you send us out equipped and empowered to be your faithful people in the world that you love so much and that we seek to serve you and glorify you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing praise selection is, You are holy, you are holy. Amen.